India's number of coronavirus cases has jumped by more than 28,000 and are fast approaching a million. The 28,498 cases reported in the past 24 hours took the national total to 906,752. Cases have jumped by 100,000 in four days. The health ministry on Tuesday also reported another 553 deaths in the past 24 hours, taking total fatalities up to 23,727. India has largely lifted its nationwide lockdown, but the spread of the virus has prompted several big cities to reimpose partial lockdowns. Indonesian President Joko Widodo wants to ramp up coronavirus testing by 50% to 30,000 per day as infections reached nearly 77,000 in Southeast Asia's most populous nation. The president instructed his ministers on Tuesday to boost the nationwide testing capacity from a previous target of 20,000 a day by opening more laboratories especially in eight areas that include the capital region of Jakarta and neighboring West and East Java. Indonesia reported 1,282 new cases, bringing the total to 76,982, with an additional 50 people succumbing to the virus. The death toll has been risen to 3,656 in Indonesia, the most in Southeast Asia. Most of the new cases on Monday came from Jakarta and East Java, two of the country's biggest hotspots. The British government on Tuesday was to make wearing a face mask mandatory in shops and supermarkets in England from next week. A statement from Prime Minister Boris Johnson's Downing Street office said the leader has been clear that people should be wearing face coverings in shops and this will be made mandatory from July 24th. Downing Street said face masks have been mandatory on public transport in England since June 15th and the Health Secretary Matt Hancock will formally extend that to shops and supermarkets on Tuesday. The French government is adjust Bastille Day's usual grandiosement military parade to celebrate heroes of the COVID-19 pandemic instead. This year's National Day commemoration will also pay homage to former President Charles de Gaulle. Eight decades after his historic appeal, he made to opponents of France's Nazi occupiers that gave birth to the French resistance. But the battle against the virus, which has claimed more than 30,000 lives in France, is expected to be the main focus of the official event in central Paris on Tuesday as President Emmanuel Macron seeks to highlight France's success in combating its worst crisis since World War II. According to congressional testimony given by company executives on Tuesday, more than 930 employees of private contractors running U.S. immigration detention centers have tested positive for COVID-19. The head of four companies, CoreCivic, the GEO Group, Management and Training Corp, and LaSalle Corrections, they detain immigrants on contract with U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, reported the infections among employees in response to questions from lawmakers. ICE has reported 45 cases of COVID-19 among its direct staff at detention facilities. Most of the employees at the privately run centers, however, work for private contractors and are not included in ICE's count. California's governor on Tuesday climbed new restrictions on businesses as COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations soared, and the state's two largest school districts in Los Angeles and San Diego said children would be made to stay home in August. Governor Gavin Newsom, a Democrat, ordered the closure of restaurants, movie theaters, zoos and museums across the nation's most popular state to cease indoor operations. Gyms, churches and hair salons must close in the 30 hardest hit counties. The governor called the move critical to stemming surge in COVID-19 cases that have strained hospitals in several of California's rural counties. Sudan declared a state of emergency in the conflict of Red and Western region of Darfur after violence and unrest in two towns. The African Union United Nations mission in Darfur said it had sent a team to Khartoum town in North Darfur 
following the reported burning of a police station and cars by unidentified protesters. It gave no details. According to a resident, protesters demanded better security and a civilian state government. State governor positions are held in Sudan by military officers despite the toppling of autocrat Omar al-Bashir in April. The United States on Tuesday rejected China's disputed claims to offshore resources in most of the South China Sea, a move that Beijing criticized as inciting tensions in the region and which highlighted an increasingly testy relationship. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said in a statement, China has offered no coherent legal basis for its ambitions in the South China Sea and for years has been using intimidation against other Southeast Asian coastal states. The United States has long opposed China's expansive territorial claims on the South China Sea, sending warships regularly through the strategic waterway to demonstrate freedom of navigation there. The Chinese embassy in the United States said in a statement dated Tuesday that Washington's accusations is completely unjustified. U.S. presidential candidate Joe Biden on Tuesday will call for setting a 100% clean electricity standard by 2035 and investing $2 trillion U.S. dollars over four years on clean energy. The Democratic nominee's new commitments mark a clear shift toward progressive environmental priorities and cutting the use of fossil fuels. The $2 trillion in spending across four years is in place of the more modest $1.7 trillion over 10 years plan that Biden proposed last year while fighting for the nomination. Most of the investments in the new proposal would be one-time costs with the goal of spending the money to the maximum extent possible during those four years. Taiwan's main opposition party again occupied Parliament Tuesday to protest against the nomination of a close aide to the president to a top-level watchdog after fighting with ruling party lawmakers to get into the building. Last month, fights erupted inside the chamber after lawmakers from the ruling Democratic Progressive Party broke through barricades erected by the main opposition Kuomintang, who had occupied it to protest against the government. Kuomintang has been protesting President Tsai Ing-wing's nomination of her senior aide Chen Chu to head the Control Yuan, an independent government watchdog. Two people are unaccounted for and thousands have been ordered to leave their homes after torrential rains pounded Western Japan. Rescuers were searching for two people after a landslide caused by heavy rain hit their house in the city of Higashi, Hiroshima on Tuesday morning. The Japan Meteorological Agency expected a seasonal rainy front to dump massive amounts of rain on central and western Japan on Tuesday, warning of flooding, landslides, swollen rivers and strong winds. Oil futures ended lower on Tuesday as major oil producing countries were said to consider easing output curbs as global crude demand has been improvement as some economies have reopened from closures due to the coronavirus pandemic. The possible easing of OPEC Plus production cuts next month after a one-month extension of the initial phase of the production cut plan and a potential rebound in U.S. production could add pressure on the supply side of the equation. OPEC and its allies, including Russia, agreed in April to cut global output by 9.7 million barrels a day in May and June after collapsing demand and a price war sent crude prices plunging. The cuts were then extended to the end of July.